Hello, hello, and welcome back to TGTV. And more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Goodwood Festival of Speed. Well, obviously not here. I am actually charging my Polestar as we speak. I'm actually at an MFG petrol station charging my car, and then I'm going to head off down to Goodwood. I'm going to give you guys and girls a little preview of what there is to see and do this weekend. I've got exclusive early access with Polestar, and I'm also going to go for a lap or two of the circuit in a Polestar with a new performance upgrade as well. So that's all to come in the video. I'm just gonna run in here and grab myself a little energy drink and then we will hit the road. We've got very exciting news because some of you will see this on my social media. Excite Energy is now in MFG petrol stations, which is all very, very cool. We've got both flavors there as well. Ignore the drinks on either side. So actually, I'm feeling in a raspberry and watermelon mood today. I'll grab one of them. So here she is then, my Polestar 2. Just nicking a little bit of electricity before we head off. We've got 86% on there. That should be more than enough. She doesn't need to clean, but I just use it so, so much. It gets dirty so quickly. I absolutely love this car. Very good, and I can't wait to actually get out on track with this thing with the performance upgrade that I've been banging on about for the past couple of months. So performance upgrade actually pushes up the power on these to about 480 brake. And it'll be good to see how the big fat Brembos and Olin dampers perform on track. So without further ado then, I'm gonna drink my drink and then we're gonna head in and get going. So then here at Goodwood, we've got a load of Polestar 2s with a performance pack, actually uprated performance pack, but we've also got this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the experimental Polestar 2. The interesting thing about this car is that it has led almost directly to the development of the BST 270, which is a limited edition that's only going to be produced in a limited edition of 270 units, as the 270 I'm sure you probably guessed about. So, differences with this car. So, this isn't the actual BST, but the BST is pretty much developed solely off this, so it's almost exactly the same. So, BST is going to be hand finished, it's got 21 inch specific wheels to this variant. It's obviously got your big old brakes there, and it's actually got different Olin's two way adjustable track focus dampers on it as well. So the handling and cornering on this thing apparently is bonkers. The only people allowed to drive this are the development drivers. Uh, literally two engineers are able to drive this at the moment. I'm not allowed to get behind the wheel of it as much as I've annoyed them and nagged them to do so. But power output is 470 odd brake horsepower. And in the UK, there's only going to be a few BST 270s actually available uh, and there's a queue for them as well so if you want one uh, good luck with that uh, but I'll leave the link below to go and check that example out uh, but it's cool it's very very cool to have these going around it's actually strange to be on a track and having a little bit uh, having sort of quiet cars going around by the magic then of the internet you join me on day two here at Goodwood because I want to show you Holstar's stand before we get on with the rest of the show we got something very exciting here there's something very exciting there. Some of you will recognize that. But I want to go through here because there was a slight development on what I saw yesterday. This then is the BST Edition 270. This is the final production car. So unlike the car you saw yesterday, which is the experimental car, this car was developed on. This is the final production car. Obviously, UK cars will come uh, in right-hand drive. However, this is it. Resplendent in white, so you've got the same 21-inch Alloy wheels, huge boot there. You've got extra styling bits that's on the 270, but it's pretty much exactly the same as the experimental car, which is really, really cool. And my favorite part is the front. Look at that. Only a few examples coming to the UK. Um, so form an orderly queue if you want one. You've got a little badge there to denote that this one is the 270. So cannot wait to see these on the road. Coming through then, I want to show you this. Here we go. This is the UK premiere of the Polestar 02 electric roadster concept. And I think it's safe to say that is a stunning piece of kit then. It's actually got a bonded aluminium unibody. So then speaking of aluminium unibodies, that is actually developed in the UK and a mono material interior as well. Bit of a mouthful. Not only that, but you've also got a drone that comes with the car 
that flies around above it. You notice there's no roof, there's no noise, there's no fumes. It's just pure electric driving thrills with no roof on. Obviously four seats there as well. But that is probably one of the best looking cars I have seen any manufacturer produce in years. What a thing. So you'll remember last year then at Festival Speed, you've got this electric GT concept, which I sat in and they told me to be very careful about. Um, but new for this year, we've got this. This has only been seen in America so far. So don't be fooled by the lack of wings. The aerodynamics on this car are absolutely sublime. So rather than resorting to outlandish wings and ducks and nonsense everywhere, this has actually got super, super smooth design. You'll notice they've even done away with the front grille. There's actually integrated aero ducts in the wheel arches. And when you come around the back, the rear light double as air blades as well. I don't know if you can see that. The aero is absolutely mega on this thing. This is not a production car. This is a concept car. But do stay tuned to what Polestar are up to because I have a sneaky suspicion they're going to have some surprises up their sleeve at some point this year, maybe next year. But you've got to keep on top of what they're up to because this brand are doing some really, really cool things. Also here then, Polestar are not messing around at Foz this year. This is the Polestar 5 and this is actually a world reveal. This is the first time this car has been shown to the public and this will be doing hill climbs every single day. So this is your new Polestar 5 kind of concept actually. Right then, elsewhere in the show then, I am going to start with this. So, Singer have got their new turbo study so loosely uh well as you can see 930 turbo but singered so to speak can't get that close to it but that pretty much is up there as a dream car for me i often get asked what would you have is there anything you actually really want anymore and i say on the whole no but that would do it very nicely absolutely adore that and that would probably be six seven hundred grand as a guess but that is the first time singer have done a turboed model and it looks like a 930 at a squint but obviously singer being singer uh, it probably shares very little to do with the 930. what else we've got here we've got the cartier lawn a permanent fixture at goodwood festival speed cartier lawn fun fact ladies and gentlemen my carrera gt was actually on the cartier lawn here in 2000 and I want to say 13, but I might be making that up. Uh, but there's actually photos of my Carrera GT here on the lawn at Goodwood. Actually with black wheels. Sacrilegious. Uh, but you'll see there are loads of bits of kit here. Obviously you've got an Enzo there. An F50, which I've just nonchalantly strolled by. Again, actually much like the Singer, I often, again when I get asked, what would you like? I say an F50 as well. So there are still things on the menu. Ladies and gents, but I think I'm a little way off that. Cause F50 is about 3 million quid. Uh, we've got a blue posi laugh there as well. I've actually you've seen this actual car at Soho Farmhouse parked up many many moons ago. Actually when it was new I think one of its first jaunts was to Soho Farmhouse where I saw it. Got 288 GTO. Um, I know I shouldn't say this but I actually don't like the look of the 288 GTO. Just never really done it for me. They are cool. I don't have anything against it. I mean, in terms of kind of iconic Ferraris go and the big five go. Um, this would be five out of five. I actually prefer the styling of the Testarossa. So this, don't hate me, sorry. Almost the same wheels as the Testarossa. A loads of other stuff which you're gonna tell me off because I don't really know what they are. Dino GT, again I do get asked quite a lot. Would, you, would I get a Dino? Not really my thing, I'm afraid. I do love them. That's just chaos, it's like Brum. Brum as well, chaos, Brumsville here. Uh, and we've got a gaggle McLaren F1s here as well. So we've got the experimental XP4 car. Most of these cars are famous. They are seen uh, every now and again at these events and they are sort of cracked out. Is this Rowan Atkinson's? Is this the one that got written off and stuffed back together again? Yes, it is. So this is Rowan Atkinson's uh, car, which got smashed up and put back together again with a bill, I believe, of about 900 grand to put it back together. Quite the insurance bill that, um, but they're obviously worth so much money that it was more than worth doing that. That would have written off pretty much any other car. And we've got an F1 high downforce pack here as well. That is a joke. We've also got Claren F1 long tail. Absurd. F1 GTR no less. I actually haven't seen this in the metal before. So, so good. And we have uh, a bog standard, should we say. 
F1 GTR here as well. What's so cool about Goodwood is you are literally allowed to just walk straight up to these cars. Obviously, I'm keeping a wide berth, so I'd have to sell everything I owned and I'd still be in debt to be able to pay for even snapping off one of the wing mirrors. But um, super trusting of the owners to allow these cars here just to be kind of uh, mooched around uh, by plebs like me. And this is a boggo. I say boggo 1993 McLaren F1 that is in sort of stock format so walking through then there's actually this area called the first glance paddock there's loads of bits and bobs that are usually here but AMG are here with their vision AMG this thing does a ludicrous amount of miles on a charge reportedly obviously it's not even vaguely production ready yet but very very cool I mean I don't know how you see out of it but there we go you've got what's called electric avenue with all the EV bits and bobs and I've been doing stuff in there which I'm sure you'll see on my social media obviously you've got Polestar and whoever in there with their electric bits and bobs I'm also here today with AA who have got a stand here answering all things EV you've got a team of experts on hand and also Edmund the main man Mr AA himself is here as well um, so I've actually been doing some fact checking and some myth busting over on my Instagram with AA some of you will have seen the question and answer session on there uh, but if you come along and you've got any questions relating to EVs then make sure you come and check these guys out perfect I didn't actually know this was here but obviously the best car in the entire show is here on a stand just literally randomly near the food place so if you want to see a Carrera GT it's the only one I've actually seen here it's here. I actually know the chap loosely that owns this. We're all on a WhatsApp group together. Very nice chap. And I saw this being uh, loaded up. Well, I saw it being driven in yesterday. I didn't realize it'd actually be here being exhibited. Very cool. I know I own one, but I still absolutely love seeing these. Best car ever made. 100%, without doubt. Don't even argue. But ladies and gentlemen, undoubtedly the star of the show is here. It's right in front of the food courts. Saturday and Sunday, I'm having a meet and greet here on the Suntech stand, right in front of, and far more interesting than me, right in front of my Merchilago. My Merchilago is here, um, fresh from uh, complete spruce up detailing and Suntech reaction film. So it's looking glossier than ever. And I'm going to be here on the stand, meeting and greeting. Everyone is welcome at 1 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. I'll post a map uh, where the stand is, but it's right in front of the food court. And I'll be here chatting to everyone, getting pictures, all the usual stuff. My Merchilago is here, so make sure you come and see the car. It's had PPF on it since I last saw it. Not that you'd be able to tell. It's looking very glossy, but you can't see any joints or anything like that. And obviously, Suntech reaction film uh, reacts with the water. It's hydrophobic, so it behaves as though uh, it's got ceramic coating on it. Water basically just falls off it, making my life easier to clean. It's looking amazing. Very exciting. Right then, on the other end of proceedings we have the car park now this is probably one of my favorite bits of goodwood every single year in fact i've actually just filmed a segment for velo here however i thought i was being rare and snazzy having my merchilago my manual merchilago on a stand and i gleefully told someone earlier that it was going to be the only manual merchilago here but it turns out i was talking out of my hat there is another manual merchilago here so Whoever that person was, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I lied to you. Coming through the car park then, I'm immediately drawn over here. There's loads of nice bits, but we can't cover everything. We have seen Mr. Schmee's cars. Now, I'm going to kick the wing mirrors off one of them. So choose in the comment, I'm joking. We've got his AMG Black Series, his GT8, his Ford GT and his AMG GT Black Series. This is the first time I've actually seen this. I've seen the other cars, I think, before, but I've not actually seen this car in the flesh. I love what he's done to this car. Those of other people do too, by the looks of it. Um, but fair play. He's brought them all down. He's left them all here for everyone to look at and enjoy. Um, yeah, great collection. I was just gonna say great collection, but actually this is a segment of his collection. Anyway, coming through then, what else have we got here? We've got 991.2 turbos. This is cool. This is a 997 turbo Gen 2 in cream with kind of a cream interior and brown roof. That is a bit of me, that. It's got 993 on the number plate, so presumably the person that's owned this also has had a 993. Proper, proper individual, whoever's owned that. We've got, got such a mix, E92, M3 there coupe lovely stuff and we've got casually an orange 918 
in the car park. Really, really actually mental to have that sat there. One and a half million quid, basically just in a field. Perfect, got an F12. Vantage NR, which actually makes me miss mine. This is a really, really cool car. And actually one of the cars that tempted me, this very car, tempted me into buying mine many, many moons ago. A uh, chap called James and his family own this. I know the car, sounds amazing. There's actually another one over there. Very cool, only 200 of those in the world. Right hand drive, I believe. 550 or 575, I always get that wrong, but it's one of those, very cool. Rather silly Bentley. Got Gallardo Spider. Got dead person. Vantage. Loads of stuff. Oh, new shape GT4 on BBSs. Go on. 997 Turbo with ceramics. Woof. Another 997 Turbo in Riviera Blue. I think that is. There's always just ridiculous stuff everywhere you look. I could be here for literally hours, but I think for now it's time to head back into the festival and see what's going on on the track. On my way back down to the track, then we've got Roger Dubuis, who are the official timing partner. It's busy already. Roger Dubuis, the official timing partner of Festival Speed this year. Stay tuned on my Instagram for some stuff with Roger Dubuis, because they kindly invited me down. I'm doing some, uh, some work with them, which is all very exciting. Never worked with them before. Let's poke our nose in here and take a little look. We've got the Jags here. There is so much cool stuff here. I actually don't know where to look. We've got old Porsches here. 917 Ford. It's just a joke. And all on the other side, I've been missing these as well. Original Alpine Tour de Course car. Wonderful stuff. I mean, you have to get here. If you can, I mean, you might have to get a resale ticket on eBay by now to get down here to F1 GTR, long tails, and BMW here are putting on uh, quite a, a show of force this year. I mean, there is literally too much. I tried to keep this video down to 10 minutes or so. A Formula One car, chaos. And all the Red Bull cars there as well. Casual, shoving that about, no problem. 997 Cup car. We've also got, I mean, it's all going on here. It's all that. It's probably one of my favorite things here. That! Literally everything is here. Every single prominent racing car. This is also going on. I can't for the life of me work out what's happening, but that's also going on here. McLaren are here as usual with a very large stand with their VIP out the back over there. We've got an Artura as there. That is actually the first time I've seen the Artura in the metal and the carbon. It's actually a very, very good looking car. Remains to be seen how it drives. I'm sure it drives very well. I'm sure it's extraordinarily fast. Uh, maybe I'll get behind the wheel of one of those very soon. Okay, so don't ask me how, but I've managed to get up to the top of the hill climbs. We've got Maserati uh, Levante Trofeo thing. We've got DBX safety car, actually. And over there, we've got another couple of safety cars. And we've also got some sort of transit. Uh, we've got the F1 AMG uh, GTR Black Series. Oh no, GTR Pro, actually. It's not the Black Series, I don't think. And we've got the F1 safety car there as well. And we've also got these absolute lords getting up in a dawn. So we've got a couple of Lambos here. Got a Lotus here. It's Havoc, it's Havoc. We've got a Raptor. It's been chewing up rubber all over the place. Panamera Turbo. We've got a pair of 296 GTBs, GTSs. I don't actually know. Um, Interesting actually, the Artura and this car. These cars are direct competitors of one another. Let me know in the comments which you would go for. One thing that surprised me about the 296, it's actually a lot louder and sounds a lot better than I thought it would. You got your V6 with a bit of electric in there and the interior. It's actually a really, really cool place to be. I wanted to hate this car. Don't ask me why I wanted to hate it. I don't actually know why I wanted to hate it, uh, but I do really, really like it. 300 or grand, not sure that's where my money would be going, but even so, very, very cool. We've got a Polestar 1 there, very good. 
and the Artura as well. Again, not a car that I'm particularly, uh, not a car that I'd probably add to the garage, but still nonetheless, cool piece of kit and undoubtedly extraordinarily quick. We've got a very, very famous Hello. racing driver in there. Hello, Hello mate, how you doing? Not too bad. How's the Artura, you enjoying it? Sorry, shoving a camera in your face. I'll leave you alone, I'll catch you later. Uh, we've got loads of Arturas here, see, we've got Polestar 2, wonderful stuff. M4 CSL going up the hill. M4 CSL, not sure how I feel about the M4 CSL. I think how I feel about the M4 CSL is that it's a lot of money and I'm not 100% sure in it. And we've got Lanzante P1, yeah, he's telling us off. Chaos. Lanzanti P1 GTR. Oh, we're going to get left behind. Let's, let's get out of the way then. Right, I did say I'd try and show you as much of everything as I could. We're down at the Cathedral Project, so we've got uh, 2000s WRC cars actually. Got 2003, 2001, 97. We've got Citroen Zara WRC car from 2004. We've actually got the 1994 Citroen ZX Rally Raid here as well there's so much cool stuff here we've also got old are these are the touring cars absolute chaos here some seriously seriously cool kit you name it it is all here at goodwood sorry if i'm boring on but literally everything is here so last but not least my little rundown of this year's goodwood festival of speed is the michelin supercar paddock so let's have a little look around you don't want to see my face gordon murray t50 this is probably one of the only new releases that's come out that i would actually genuinely really 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 like that is my idea of heaven in there and i can't tell you the amount of times I've watched the video with Gordon talking about this engine when it's being developed and it's uh, revving on a machine. Uh, call me a little bit simple, but I absolutely love that. High revving V12, love it. Sounds incredible. Purple Lotus with a bike on it, for some reason. AMG1, now this is a controversial car because several high profile collectors on Instagram alone that have had these cars on order have pulled out. They've kind of felt like AMG have gone back on their promise a little bit with what this car was set to deliver. F1 tech, mind blowing stats, blah, blah, blah. But it's actually no faster than a lot of other supercars and hypercars. There's not really anything to it. It's heavier than it's supposed to be. It's not as fast as it's supposed to be. Um, and people are pulling out of their orders on this. All a little bit awkward. And obviously there's been huge delays on this car as well. So uh, looks unbelievable. The active aero is incredible. The race mode and all the rest of it. But uh, I don't know. A Merc don't usually get stuff wrong, but I think they've got this one wrong. Bit of a shocker. Anyway, I'd still have one in a flash. We've got an AMG GT3 car or Black Series. We've got Lanzante here as well, who do tag turbo, well, oh, tag turbo, F1 engines. So, so cool. Lanzante just don't mess around. They've got a massive, massive stand here as well, which we won't have time to see. But if you come to Goodwood, they've got their own specific section this year which is full of incredible kit but i mean that's nothing to be sniffed at aston martin here and actually valkyrie as well probably one of the nicest sounding cars going up the hill terrible terrible footage here but super super cool love the valkyrie i mean it is very very silly let's poke the camera in i mean imagine telling your missus you're going out for dinner and that she tell you to shut up i think and grow up, I think, as well. But really, really cool. Obviously, absolutely incredible. It's basically a Formula One car. So cool. And Aston did not drop the ball on this. They did not go back on what they set out to deliver. They've delivered it. Customer cars are arriving. It's a production car and it's ready to roll. And it's pretty much exactly what they said they were going to do. So fair play to Aston. That is a seriously, seriously exciting car. Vantage V12, not a huge amount of interest in that. Vantage with the roof off. DB11, not a huge amount of interest. Some Bugattis, uh, Chiron Super Sport 300, ludicrous. These are all going up the hill as well, so you'll see them around. And over here we've got, rather ludicrously, that's probably the fastest thing here. Well, definitely the fastest thing here. There isn't anything that will beat this thing up to uh, 200 miles an hour, I don't think. Shout at me in the comments if I'm lying, but that is the Rimac Nevera. Super, super bonk. That is unbelievable the pace of that thing a really cool spec as well We've got like a kind of cream inside last but not least we've got mr shmi 150s uh zenvo 
TSR. TSR? Zenvo, something rather. Um, Shmi has, I'm sure, covered this in more detail than even is feasible on his channel, so I'm not even going to say anything about it, but uh, mental. <laughs> Absolutely mental. I can't believe this is his. What a joker. Ridiculous, but you have to go and check that out as well down here near the supercar paddock in the Zenvo stand. So that then is that. That is all we've got time for. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, little run around of Good Boy Festival Speed. Uh, I haven't actually had time to really go through as much depth as I'd like everything that's going on here, but you really must come down, check it out. And a huge, huge thanks, of course, to Polestar for hosting me today. Uh, I've had an amazing time, and actually yesterday as well, on track with all their goodies and some of their new toys as well. So thank you so much to those guys. For now, I will see some of you on the SunTech stand Saturday and Sunday at 1 p.m. with my Merchilago. Come and say hello for the meet and greet. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.